We are heading way back in the archives for today's look back and look ahead as part of Kello TV's 70th anniversary. Our in-house historian, marketing and creative services director, Paul Farmer, has tracked down another once familiar face to Kelloland TV viewers over the years. And this one started at Kello TV when the view for viewers at home was still in black and white. Seventy years ago, a college professor, professor earns $5,100 a year. Two out of three families now have a telephone, and KELO TV takes to the airwaves, beginning the first television programming to the region. Over those 70 years, the faces you've seen on Kelloland TV have changed. Some remain here for decades, others just a few years, but they all felt like family to us. So, which may have you wondering, where are they now? Well, you don't have to wonder any longer. Today we're talking with Bill Van Dusen, who Kelloland viewers knew as the trusty weatherman back in the 60s, right, Bill? Oh, the commercial was in every reference to the to the weather cast, the old home weather. Yeah. And they did not believe in saying that they were the best. Their slogan was, old home is good bread. <laughs> And it served them well. It served me well, too, to become known the, as the old home weatherman. Sure. So uh, what year did you start? Or what brought you to Kelloland? Well, I, en I enlisted in the Army in uh, 1961 uh, here in, in Sioux Falls. I'd been working in Watertown on the new AM radio station there and uh, decided that it was time to... Uh, the Berlin crisis had come up and it was time for me to volunteer, so I did. And uh, I volunteered so I could be a broadcaster and after spending 18 months on Okinawa, uh, of course did all the previous stuff to, to get trained, but uh, then I came back and I took an audition here at Kello. And uh, the program director at the time, Tom Sheely, he says, well, what, do, what experience have you had doing weather? And I looked at him and I said, well, I did one weather show on Okinawa. And that was the truth. So I was very lucky. Uh, at the time, you, you just had to be able to talk and not trip over your tongue too much because they didn't have meteorologists yeah. doing the weather. And the old radar that we had, uh, well, we didn't have a drop on that either. Uh, we could take pictures of it and, and put it on the air that way. Sure. So you started in the 60s. Who were some of those colleagues you worked with in the 60s? Well, I guess I had to be approved by more than one person to actually get the job here. Uh, Leo Hardig was the news director at the time, and Leo and, and his wife Gina were just great people. So Leo was a good news director. And there were a lot of things that were happening. Uh, when I started the the big news was the Oahe Irrigation Project, mm -hmm. and they had me do a uh, voiceover on a, a complete report on the whole system of what are they going to do if we lose, we lose our water in South Dakota and ship it out to other states. So it was very critical at the time as well. And uh, that was when I realized how important Kello was to the area, and especially with the broadcast uh, coverage that they had not only then, but of course it's even bigger now. Yeah, so you did a lot of weather shows. You mentioned the, the old home weather. Um, I think you also did something they called weather in motion, is that right? Well, that's true. There's kind of a funny story with that. Uh, the way it worked is they had a Polaroid disc, I imagine about as big as one of the old-fashioned lights. <clears throat> Excuse me, the old-fashioned lights were also very hot. And uh, they had a little motor that made this disc turn. And all of the symbols that we put on the weather board would flash or move. The rain would rain. Everything would happen as it was supposed to. Well, eventually, uh, Kello was able to put together the proper uh, arrangements to go color because when I started here, it was all black and white television. Mm -hmm. And we were all excited, and especially in the weather, we thought it was going to look great. The only problem that we ran into was it was so hot 
on this uh, Polaroid disc that it, it melted it. <laughs> and that ended weather in motion right then. So after you left Kelloland, uh, where did your travels take you and uh, what are you doing now? Uh, when I actually stopped working on the air for Kello, I'd been working in nightclubs in Sioux Falls. Mm -hmm. And for Bud Brown, who was quite an entrepreneur, he uh, took over the actual running of the Mokamba Club. So uh, it was uh, quite an experience doing that. And uh, then I decided, well, I guess my forte is television, not nightclubs. And I went to Florida and got a job with uh, WPEC in West Palm Beach after about a year. And after a, a few years, uh, I was uh, uh, sent down to WTVJ in Miami, which was very much for those of you that know about WCCO mm -hmm. and how big they are in Minneapolis. Uh, that was what WTVJ was in Miami. So right now you're playing to a much smaller and different audience, aren't you, right now? Well, thank you. Yes, I am. Uh, well, I had to figure out something to do when I retired. I had uh, picked up playing keyboards, and I found out that all of the old music that I knew that had all of the melody in it that we all know and all the good old songs, uh, the, my audience would be the people in retirement homes. So I took it up, and it's, recently I've been playing at 11 or 12 of them around town, and it's, it's incredibly great to be able to see the smiles on their faces because I play the music they know, yeah. and it's all fun, yeah. you know. Well, it's really great to meet you, Bill, and catch up and hear some of those stories of the early days of Kello Land. So thank you very much for, for sitting down with us today. Okay, thank you. Kello Land Living will be highlighting former Kello Land TV on-air personalities as we count down the weeks to our big 70th anniversary on May 19th.